You're listening to Creative Breakthrough, the podcast that provides you with the strategies to elevate your creative passion to the next level. I'm your host, creative hustler, and chicken wing lover, Shireen Kassam, aka The Funny Brown Girl. And yes, I have an unhealthy obsession with chicken wings. Now, get ready to flex your creative muscle and keep winning. Welcome to the Creative Breakthrough. I am your host, Shireen Kassam, aka The Funny Brown Girl. Hey, this podcast is focused on how to elevate your creative passion to the next level. But for the last couple of weeks, we've been doing a special series on side hustles because I think side hustles are super important, especially if you're creative. Your creativity, your hobby could be your side hustle. But I also think it's important to find a side hustle that makes money and that is financially stable. So like when times like COVID comes around, you have something to fall back on. And I say that because as entertainers, I know a lot of us, especially if we're actors, comedians, performers, Performers, musicians, a lot of our venues have shut down due to COVID. And so a lot of us have had to go and find another way to make money, whether that's doing Uber or Lyft or DoorDash or something in the gig economy or just transitioning fully and maybe even going and finding a nine to five job. And so I think no matter what kind of career you're in and if your hobby, your creative hustle is a hobby, let's figure out a way to make it a side hustle. Now, what exactly is a side hustle? You may be asking if you're not familiar with that word. A side hustle is kind of like a second job, but it's more than that because what it is, is it's something that you do outside of your nine to five that, that either is supplementing your income. So something that is like your travel fund maybe, or your shopping fund, or you want to be an entrepreneur and you're using your nine to five to help you support your side hustle in terms of funding it and growing it and giving you the, the, the monetary ability to grow your side hustle into your full-time entrepreneurship opportunity. So a side hustle has a lot of benefits to it. It also helps teach you new skills. It helps you stretch yourself. It helps you develop skill sets that you can then take back to your nine to five, or if you're looking for a new job that you can use on your resume, a side hustle is also a great way just to pursue your passion outside of your nine to five. So for example, stand-up comedy started off as a hobby for me. I didn't get paid for it. Same with podcasting started off as a hobby for me. I didn't get paid, but over time I made it into a side hustle. I made it into something that was actually bringing in income for me while maybe not a lot of income, enough income to make it worth my while to do it. Because, um, especially in the United States, when you're filing your tax returns, if you don't make money during, if you don't make money doing your hobby, it's considered a hobby. Um, and you want it to be a business so that you can get a tax deduction. So there's always like benefits to having side hustles as well, because you do want that tax deduction. If you live here in the United States, I could go on and on about why you should have a side hustle and a side hustle can look like anything. It can be a podcast. It can be an online class that you, you upload onto the internet and then you just get passive income from it. It can be the gig economy though. I, I don't want to push you towards the gig economy during in these episodes because the gig economy, you still work for somebody else in a way, right? So you're still giving a part of your wages to Uber or Lyft or DoorDash. Um, so be wary of those and see if you can start your own side hustle instead. And like I said, there's been a couple episodes that I've done on side hustles. So definitely check out the first one, which was three ways to create a successful side hustle. And we go through the three tips and three pieces of advice that I feel are really important when sketching out what your side hustle is going to be. Then a couple weeks ago, we talked to a financial coach who talked to us about how to maximize your profits in your side hustle, how to grow your business, how to fund your business, and how to make sure that you're getting the right advice on, on maximizing that profit, especially when you're doing your tax return. And today I want to do a frequently asked question series on all the questions I've received over the last couple weeks in terms of side hustles. So this week I'm going to answer all the questions I've gotten. And then I'm also going to share with you what I wish I knew when I started my side hustles. Okay. So let's get started. So the first pieces of advice I'm going to give are for people who are performers, artists, entertainers, people who um, may not be starting a website or, uh, or a product or service that they're launching, but this advice is pretty much basic for anyone. So if you're going to a conference or you're going to do a presentation, this is useful information for you as well. So if you're starting a side hustle, super important to keep track of your expenses. I just do this in a Google spreadsheet. I find Google to be the easiest uh, platform to do any type of documentation because no matter where you are, if you're on your phone, your tablet or your computer, you can pull it up. 
I just make a simple, easy spreadsheet. I put the date, the location, what venue I'm doing and like some description of what it is. Um, I have a column that says revenue, a column that says expenses, and then a column that says miles, and then a column that says mileage. Because in the United States, you can't expense your gas for travel, but you can expense your mileage. So it's really important to keep track of your miles, and that's round trip. And then you actually multiply that by the amount that the government is giving you that year per mile. So it changes every year, so you have to check what that number is. But I keep a simple spreadsheet, that way I'm tracking my revenues and expenses. Your expenses, like Henry said in the previous episode, your expenses are anything that are helping you or providing you information or research or resources to do your side hustle. So if you are an artist, your paintbrushes, your canvases, if you're a podcaster, your mic, your Zoom subscription, your laptop, but it all has to be bought in the year that you are working. So everything on your revenue and expense sheet is something that you purchased in 2020 to help you grow your side hustle. And then your revenue is everything that you're making, obviously people paying you into money, people paying money to you. Something else that I didn't know that I didn't do for a while is for your expenses. If you're like at a speaking engagement or a performance, you can expense your food. But as Henry said, super important, make sure you keep all your receipts. My second piece of advice is no matter what you're doing, if you're doing a performance of any kind or you're giving up your time or your services and you're going to get paid for it, and, and I do this even if I'm not going to get paid for it, have a contract in place. Put a contract in place. Um, I always ask in the contract for a 50% deposit upfront and I give them a date by which the deposit has to be paid to me by for me to lock in that date. And if they don't pay by that date, then that date is open for anyone else to come and take. I also make sure that when I get my payment the day of, I get that payment before I perform. Now, this is not gonna be all the time. Like if you're going through a reliable source, um, like a corporation or an organization, I would be okay with not getting the payment ahead because sometimes they have to mail you the check and they want 30 days to do that. But if you're working for a performer or some independent artist or group, I always, always, always ask for my payment up front because there have been so many times when I've done a performance, like a comedy show, and they're like, oh, I'll get you after the show. Don't worry, I'm gonna take care of you. I'm gonna take care of you. I got you, I got you. And then you get up there, you blow the audience away, and then the performer has disappeared. Like you cannot find the promoter anywhere. He's just gone because he didn't wanna pay you. So super important to know who you're working with, who you're dealing with, and get that payment up front. In my contract, I have the non-refundable. I also write there that you have, you have to cancel within 48 hours of the event date if you want a refund. So, I mean, well, within a 48 hours, you have to give me notice before the 48 hour period if you want a refund. If you're within that 48 hour period and you give me cancellation notice, you do not get a refund on your, de on your um, deposit at all. Unless, and I have a writer that says, unless it's due to forces out of our control, like a hurricane or a flooding or something, because I also don't wanna put myself at risk. So definitely go online, check out some contracts, performance contracts, and pull whatever pieces feel comfortable to you. I've learned over the years, my contract has become a little bit more detailed. I also ask them, um, I, I make sure they put the address of where I'm performing, what time they want me to be there at, what time do they expect me to go on stage. I also say in the contract that for every hour past the time that you have told me to be there, that I've not performed, I'm gonna charge you X rate. So this keeps them on schedule. Like they better put, if they say I'm going up at eight, they better put me up at eight because if it's already 8.30 and I haven't gone up yet, I will charge you extra. I know I said an hour, but it's, it says they're prorated by time. Um, I also make sure in the um, contract I put what is the dress code? What do you want me to be wearing? And I say that because I one time had an issue where I was living in Boston and they flew me to Atlanta for a show and I came in just a nice top and jeans and they wanted me to cover up. They wanted me to cover my arms and put a hijab on my head and I didn't have that with me. And so they said, well, we can get you that, but you need to put it on. And I, I actually pushed back and I said, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put on a hijab because that's not, that's not me. I don't perform with a hijab on and I don't feel comfortable doing that right now. And so they didn't make me perform. They, they brought me all the way to Atlanta. Luckily, I had had them pay for my flights, my hotel, and they had given me my money upfront because thank God I had said, I want my money upfront because something didn't seem right when I got there. So always, always ask for your money up front and don't be shy. Like if they say, well, the show's starting and I, I need time to go to the ATM and get your money, you tell them I'll wait. 
because they're just they're pushing their luck and they're hoping that you're going to go on stage and they can disappear by the time they get back and this has happened to me i've had them wait for an hour and a half to start a show while they went and found their money to pay me and they literally weren't going to because think about it they took them an hour and a half to go find the money to pay me but the show was only supposed to be an hour so I would have been done and they still wouldn't have had the money for 30 more minutes because they didn't have it. So they had to go find it and get it together because they honestly thought that I would be not smart enough to go on stage without that money. So make sure you do that. If you are traveling for anything, always, always, always ask them, tell them you want to book your own flights and hotels, because if you allow them to book your flights, they're going to book you on the early flights. They're going to book you on the really bad airlines like Spirit or Frontier. If you ask them, they're going to book your hotel. Sometimes a lot of comedy clubs will give you the hotel for free, um, but they put you in a really seedy hotel. It's like a, it's a motel. It's not safe, especially if you're a woman, they'll put you on the ground floor because the person working the front desk knows that you're a comedian and knows you're going to be out of the room at night for three or four hours. And that's when they're going to break in. So always, always, always ask if you can book your own hotel rooms, tell them, can you give me the funds that you were going to pay for the hotel room so that I can book my own hotel room? Now you might be thinking, well, then it's going to be more expensive to book my own hotel room. Not necessarily. There's a lot of organizations out there now for performers that will help you barter for cheaper hotel rooms for social influencing purposes. So like I was in Asheville, North Carolina a couple years ago and I stayed in the Marriott. It was $200 a night and they gave it to me for $20 a night with the promise that I would then go and put a positive review on Google, TripAdvisor, Yelp, that I would post about it on my social media and then share those links with them. So there's always a way to kind of barter your way into a hotel for a lower rate. I would be wary of asking for hotel rooms for free, especially right now, businesses are suffering. It, d don't push your luck, but go ahead and say, is there anything we can do to barter? Because I'm coming in as a comedian. Maybe you're gonna be doing radio. Maybe there's a way that you can even shout out the hotel you're staying at. So try to be creative. Um, and again, always book your own hotels or your own flights because they will, they will try to book you on the cheapest flight and then you're going to really be miserable and you're going to hate them. Okay, now, if you're going to sell a product or service and you're not doing speaking engagements, which you might do once you get big and you become an entrepreneur, you might do speaking engagements. So keep everything else I said in mind. But now if you're doing a product or service and your goal is to grow to six figures, I highly suggest using QuickBooks to do your accounting. So instead of creating a spreadsheet, I use QuickBooks because I buy so much inventory and I have so many packages going out the door. I need something that automatically keeps track of what I'm spending. Track your costs carefully. Track your costs even before you start your business. Lay everything out and understand what your costs are. So if you're if you're going to be mailing out products, right? What what's the cost of your product? What is the shipping cost? What is the label cost? What is the ink cost? If if the post uh, man or like the shipping people lose your products, how much money will you be out of? Can you afford to lose your products? How much are you willing to lose in damaged inventory? How much are you willing to lose in returned inventory? So you've really got to make sure you think of every scenario and totally understand your costs. And I say this because when I started my business, I did a lot of competitor analysis and it's super important to know what are your competitors doing in the space? Sign up for their emails, make sure you know what they're doing in terms of marketing, follow them on social media understand their business model, and then understand how are you going to separate yourself from them? So I thought, okay, I'm going to separate myself in the beginning. I'm going to offer free shipping. This way I drive up a lot of um, demand for my products. A lot of people are like excited to use me because they're going to get free shipping. But what I did wrong was I was, they were selling, I sell gummy bears. I sell CBD gummy bears. They were selling gummy bears for $30. I started selling mine for $30. They were charging $7 for shipping. I was not charging anything for shipping, right? So I was losing that additional $7 that they were gaining. Now I want to offer, I want to say no free shipping. You have to pay for shipping, but people, people are already, now people are upset because they're like, well, it's been free all this time. Why do I have to pay for shipping? So what I should have done is started with my cost higher at $37 given free shipping. So really I was, I was charging $30, but now because I'm, paying for shipping. I'm asking them to pay for shipping. I could bring the price down to 30 and say, guess what? Like I'm charging you for shipping, but the price has come down, right? So I didn't think far enough in the future about what I was going to do. So make sure you, you, you plan out, think long-term, think short-term and think long-term. Make sure you're taking into account your time, right? How much time are you going to spend on this business and what is your time worth? So for example, if you're only, for example, and, and, I, and I don't want to say this is a bad thing, but I know a lot of people are making masks right now for COVID, right? 
I've seen people selling masks for $1. Now, that really concerns me because once you take into account just the materials, right? Just the, the cloth and the, the elastic, let's say that's 25 cents, right? Then you're taking the time to actually stitch it. That in and of itself, it must, I've never done, I've never stitched a mask, but I'm going to assume it takes minimum five to 10 minutes to stitch a mask. So that's at least five to $10 worth of your time. Then you've got to package it, or you've got to put it on your website. Then you've got to package it and take it to the post office. All that adds up. I, you, charging a dollar for a mask is not worth your time because you're valuing yourself at pennies and you're worth more than pennies. I know you're worth more than pennies. So charge appropriately. Okay. See what everyone else is doing and charge. Most people are selling masks anywhere from five to, and I've seen $5. I've seen $1, $5, 10, 15, 20. The most I've seen is $25. So if you can't make a mask for less than $25, maybe mask making is not in your portfolio of side hustles, but figure out how can you make them cheaper? I mean, one idea is go buy the $1 masks, right? Go whoever's selling these $1 masks on Etsy, buy them and then resell them at a higher price. If you think you can get a higher price, don't just go out and do this, but what can you do to make the customer value this mask more than $1? Okay. I've learned that customer satisfaction is the most important thing when starting a business, whether it's a product-based business or service-based business, or even if you're an entertainer or performer, one, be professional, always be professional. Talk to them, even if they're texting you, talk to them and text them just like you would if you were in a business meeting or with a professional, do not text them like your friends. When I'm, set, when I'm sending out products and uh, my CBD merchandise, I always write a personalized note, give them instructions, teach them how to use it, anything that you can share with them. I highly, highly encourage you if you're going to start a business to be your own customer, right? Or ask your mom or your dad or your sibling to be your first customer and, and pretend they are a customer and ship them out the item or send them the item and get their feedback on the entire process from ordering the product to receiving the product to you following up with them about how they enjoyed the product. And I say this because I've been trying to support a lot of my friends on Facebook who are out of a job right now and who have started side hustles, especially in the baking and cooking space. And there is one woman that I recently reached out to cause she was making some desserts and I was really interested in them. And she, she's really good at marketing herself on social media. She's really good at posting a really enticing picture, right? To get you to, to reach out to her. But then she doesn't have a lot of good follow through after that. Her response rate is slow. She doesn't have a menu of items. You have to ask her individual questions and wait for her to response versus she should just make a template. She should canva.com C A N V A.com. You can make Instagram posts, newsletters, emails, everything on there. You can design them yourself. She needs to go on there and make a menu. Here's what I offer. Here are the flavors. Here's the cost. Here's additional costs. Here's how much shipping is. Here's how much delivery is. Here's pickup times. Here's my phone number. Let's get started. What do you need? Right? Instead it was like, bah, 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 bah. And I had to keep asking her all these questions. And there were so many mix ups along the way. Even when I showed up to pick up the items, she didn't give me the right address. I didn't have a phone number to call her. It was just a hot mess. So just think about, yourself as the customer. Do you like the service that you're providing? Is it easy to understand and follow through? Like I said, focus on the com competition. What are they doing? How are you going to differentiate yourself? And then most importantly, and I talked about this on the first episode of the series, the three easy steps to developing a side hustle, make sure you have a marketing plan in place. Okay. Make sure you're focused on collecting email addresses. So even if you just have an idea, but you're not sure how to, how to, um, put it into action yet, go ahead and create your website, go ahead and put a landing page up and start collecting email addresses, start creating the social handles. If you have the name already of the business, create the social handles on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok. TikTok is huge right now. I kind of missed the boat on that. I didn't realize that it was more than dancing videos. And it is on TikTok. You can do stuff around your business. You can offer marketing advice. You can, you can film your journey in starting a side hustle on TikTok, and people will come. And definitely learn Facebook ads. If you're selling something that is legally allowed on Facebook, learn Facebook ads. Again, there's so many classes out there on YouTube, even on Facebook that are free. So you do not have to pay to do these things. Now, lastly, things I wish I had known when I started a side hustle. So when I started comedy, things I wish I had known, always have a contract, always get paid up front, always book my own hotel, always book my own flights have a non-refundable deposit. I didn't do that in the beginning. Super important. Making sure I know exactly where I have to be, what time, making sure they're going to pay me if they keep me over 
over time. This is really important, especially if you're performing at weddings, because they're always late at weddings. They'll tell you that they want you to do a performance at the reception at 8.30, and at 8.30, the bride hasn't come back yet into the room from changing her outfit. So make sure you're always charging extra for your time with that. Um, and then keeping track of my expenses and my revenue and making sure I'm keeping track of my mileage as well, because that's super important. You might think, oh, I don't do that many performances or I don't do that many speaking engagements or I'm not doing that many things with my hobby, like I'm not going out enough. But you'll be surprised come December 31st if you wait to do your screen to do your uh, spreadsheet, how many things you're going to forget to do. So make sure you're just keeping track of that. At the end of the year, I always do that though. I always skim through my credit card receipts. I skim through Amazon purchases because there's sometimes there's things you're buying on Amazon that you forget to keep track of as well. So make sure you put that in as well. Okay, now for my other business, for my CBD business and for womandela.com, which is African products that I source from Africa, things I wish I had known. I really, really thought that I had a strong, strong social media platform. I thought that I had a lot of followers. I had over 15,000 followers when I started my business. And my, I, my thinking was if I put it out there, they will come. Let me tell you, they will not come. Okay. There are so many people fighting for your friend's attention with their side hustles. They can't support everybody. They may not even see your post. They may not even understand what your post is about. So do not assume that your friends will come. And even if they do come, they may come in the first week, the first month, but after that, it's going to slow down. So you need to really understand what is your marketing plan? How are you going to get people to find you? How are you going to get people to come to you? So that's where it's really important to see what is, uh, what are other people doing? Research, research, research. I see so many, especially right now with the holiday season, so many people have started t-shirt companies and sweatshirt companies, and some have done really well and some I'm not sure. And I, and I try to figure out, okay, how are they met? How are they marketing their product? How are they getting people to find them? How are they, how are they being sustainable? And so make sure you really understand your marketing plan. Something else that I didn't do in the first year of my business is I didn't invest my profits back into the business. And now some of you are thinking, okay, well, this is my side hustle. This is something I'm, I'm trying to save money to go on a trip. I'm trying to save money to buy a car. This is that money. Yes, I totally agree. But to grow a side hustle, you still need to invest money back into it, right? So like for this podcast, I needed to invest in a mic. The mic I'm using now is totally different than the mic I started with. For comedy, I needed to invest in Zoom this year. I needed to invest in a newer laptop because Zoom was running slow on my older laptop because of all the virtual comedy shows. So you've always got to be thinking, how do I keep advancing? With my CBD business, I started with small inventory. I started with $500 worth of inventory, but now I've got a lot more inventory because I have to keep buying inventory so I don't keep selling out so that more and more people can keep purchasing it and I keep growing. So really think about that. Also something I didn't, I didn't do, I tried to do everything. When I first started my online business, I was like, I'm doing the marketing, I'm doing the finance, I'm doing the content creation. It's exhausting guys. As you keep growing, you've got to learn what are your, what are you good at? Where do your skills lie? And then you've got to start outsourcing things that you're not good at, or you don't have the time for, or that's not your specialty. I realize I am, I don't have the patience for social media. I don't have the patience for Instagram. I, there's a, there's a rule where you've got to go and like comment on like 20 people's posts a day or 20 people's profiles. And then you've got to interact with them. I don't, that's not where I want to be spending my time. I want to be spending my time on strategy and marketing. So I outsourced it. I hired someone who was looking, whose side hustle was doing Instagram and social media for people. So I took my side hustle and I hired her for my side hustle and she's using her side hustle to help me. So find people and you can, you can find people in your own, um, you can find people on Facebook, join a lot of groups. There's a lot of entrepreneur groups, side hustle groups. You can go on fiverr.com. You can go to upwork.com. What I highly, highly, highly say though is do your research. Make sure you are finding the right people. Make sure you're asking the right questions because right now there's a lot of unemployed people out there who have joined Fiverr and Upwork and all these other sites, these gig sites, and they say they can do certain things, but they do not know how to do them. And so it's your job to find out if they're telling you the truth or not. And sometimes you might not find out. And the good thing is that if you use Fiverr or Upwork and somebody takes advantage of you and doesn't perform what they said they were going to do, you can escalate it and get your money back. But if you go outside of those systems, it's a little harder. So just be wary of that. And then the last piece of advice that I would say that I wish I, well, I knew this, I just didn't prioritize this. 
but make sure you just keep learning, keep learning, keep gaining knowledge, keep seeing what everybody else is doing, keep listening to podcasts, keep watching free tutorials. Like if you're on Shopify, Shopify has a bunch of free tutorials. There's also a bunch of free tutorials on YouTube. So just keep watching these things, keep learning from people. On TikTok, people are putting up like their expertise and what they're learning and their tips and tricks. Go watch those tips and tricks. It's this, this is such a competitive space right now. Just, just being a side hustler is a competitive space right now. Being an entrepreneur is a competitive space right now because so many people are out of work. So many people are looking for a new way to make income and, and then, and they're competing with the people who have a job who are still trying to be side hustlers and have, start their own business. So you've just got this really big side hustling economy right now. And so it's super important to keep learning and keep seeing what other people are doing and understanding how can you differentiate yourself from them. Okay. With all of that said, if you have any questions, you know, you can always reach out to me. You can hit me up on email at hi at funnybrowngirl.com. You can hit me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, funny brown girl, or join our Facebook community. It's creative breakthrough community, and you can post any of your questions, thoughts, or comments on there. I hope to see you there. Now with that, go flex your creative muscle and keep winning. Thanks for listening. Stay connected about upcoming resources, including opportunities, festivals, competitions, and grants to help you grow your creative passion by subscribing to my bi-monthly newsletter by visiting funnybrowngirl.com forward slash subscribe. Don't miss out on a life-changing opportunity and subscribe today at funnybrowngirl.com forward slash subscribe. And hey, if you decide to go on Instagram today, follow me. I'm Funny Brown Girl. I'm Shereen Kassam, and you've been listening to Creative Breakthrough. Now, go flex your creative muscle and keep winning.